Welcome to Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 8, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 24, The Return. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to this point, including this episode. And uh, Tyler Calvert has done a video talking about this episode, which I will link in the description box. Uh, yeah, I agree with what he said. I'm going to try to avoid just restating unless I have some comments so yeah uh, loved seeing Din fighting Imperials in Mandalorian I, I guess Dark Dark Trooper version 2 is what they are and one of them uses the the cord thing get over here and Grogu comes and rescues him and let's see. yeah, and and you know, Gideon gets all. I'll do it myself. Have we heard before that astromech beeping and booping that that's called binary? I mean, I like it. I'm I'm. It's a good way to to describe because the, you know, there's a fairly limited. If you can only speak in beeps and boops. Binary, yeah, makes sense. And so at first it looked like R7 was just straight up afraid of the mouse droid, which, I don't know, I mean, I guess the thing is that when I think about a mouse droid in Star Wars, like, the very first thing I think of is that that's, oh yeah, you know, there's there's a bunch of those in, in some of the games, and you get to destroy them because you're usually playing as you know a rebel and the second thing I think of is Chewbacca scaring one in A New Hope so yeah but you know it's it that yeah I, I don't think we've seen the siren before but this that's a cute detail and let's see yeah and and Axe shouts to, to get the Mandalorians to leave. It's really not a surprise that someone who's named after Axe Body Spray is a douche, but seriously though, I guess he's not the spy. Like, people were saying either he's the spy or maybe the armor, who's maybe secretly Rook, is the spy, but yeah, um, this episode didn't really... I guess it's still possible that they're spies, but they are certainly playing the long game then, because they do both really show up for, yeah, that might have just been, you know, to get us really hyped to, to, you know, that it looked as bleak as it did at the end of the episode before this one. Let's see, yeah, just so I say it, I, this is a really great uh, season finale, I was very, very, yeah, a lot of, lot of fun to watch. And let's see them. Yeah, I, I quite like the fight where R7 is turning off the shields one by one. You know, this series, the, the Mandalorian series has had, you know, a lot of video game yes, you know, the, the, a lot of the episodes are very much like individual quests like you do in a video game. And now we have, you know, a, a wave of a, uh, ah, not a wave, but yeah, waves of attackers faced, you know, yeah. So that was fun, and yeah, the, the there's I think a total of four of the siren mice droids in in the you know long term, and R seven just like flies off like. Sucks to be you, the prequels are canon, and yeah, um, until there is significant changes made to police in Western countries so that they are not, you know, just the largest gang, I do love to see impotent cops. And yeah, we see the Gideon clones, and one of them does the thing, I, I you know, I would definitely be like annoyed if they didn't if you if you're gonna go that close to a face submerged in water 
and like it it's supposed to be tense you got to have them open their eyes it's just that you know which does you know it it does make it pretty dark that din just kills all of them because it's you know like if the eyes didn't open you could be like well okay din we're supposed to be on his side he's killing these these clones maybe they're you know maybe the brain is the last part to be cloned and they're just you know husks of meat there's no nope they are definitely you know but yeah there's you know he is an anti-hero he's not a, a goody goody so it's uh, yeah Let's see. and and you know at the end of the day these are you know they're clones of an evil person which you know, a lot of science fiction has told me if you clone an evil person, then the clone is also evil. And if you clone a good person, the clone is probably also evil. There's a lot of science fiction authors who really, really don't like the idea of clones. Now, let's see. You know, don't get me wrong, I, I appreciate it. it. It raises a number of ethical issues. It's, I'm just talking about, like, I guess it's a spoiler to say... Um, I'll just say that there are stories wherein clones of good people are evil, even though it doesn't really make sense. Right, and yeah, we see that the the Mandalorians who stayed on Mandalore, you know, they actually they made these gardens, and that's how they got by. Which, yeah, that's a that's a great kind of you know because. That is, I, I saw that the pop culture detective, I guess it's been years by now, but he made a w video where he pointed out, you know, we have all these video games where, you know, you are, like, fighting people in the post-apocalypse. What about one where you're trying to, you know, make, um, make the world more livable? And, yeah, you know, in... These Manda Mandalore Mandalorians, their their best bet is probably gardens. So yeah, and we get the reinforcements, and it is so epic. And Bo-Katan is flying; she ignites the saber, and like for, I'll you know at first I was like, oh, it's cool. She's like leading them into battle. You know, it's like like you know, there's a lot of like you have to go back a bit. But historically, there are, there are battles where, like, the, the person leading the charge would hold up, you know, maybe a weapon, maybe a flag, something, and, and you know, let those who love me follow me, you know, kind of, and, so yeah, you know, at, at first it was like, oh, you know, that's, yeah, that's, I, I like that, I like, these. and then she starts slashing people with it, and I'm like, this is awesome, you know, just, yeah, that was, that was, so freaking cool, and we have other mid-air combat. The the armor gets some good hits in with the with her two tools in the just yeah, you know, and and it is like honestly, it would be a shame. They have the budget, they have the technology, they have the imagination. You have two sides who have jetpacks. If you don't do mid-air physical combat like what are you even doing why are any of us even here if you're not gonna have them fighting with like short range web it's just it's awesome i absolutely loved it and we have the yeah you know gideon explains you know you never even gave my clones a chance which see he agrees with me he also realizes that not all clones have to be you know he's like my clones would have the one thing that I do not. Arrogance. I mean, they would be Force-sensitive, and that is, you know, yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, that would really be, like, the one thing that, you know, because he's, he's intelligent, he's well-studied, he's a tactician, he can fight. Now he has armor, the only thing left would be Force-sensitivity, and just, yeah, so... That was a really cool, and yeah, really loved the the one on one fights near the the end, and let's see, yeah, and the Praetorians come in and start attacking Din, and then they attack Grogu, and just yeah, really really cool. The you know also just the fact that Grogu, you know, this episode has him 
using uh, IG-12 to fight, you know, and the then, you know, yeah, against Praetorians, that's like, how are you going to fight that, you know? Let's see. And Gideon comes face to face with Bo-Katan, and, and he's like, so, what will it be this time? Surrender or fight? Just to, just to really jam it in and twist that blade. Just like, wow. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and Grogu makes like Yoda and tries to break a red guy. And Gideon breaks the, the dark saber, which is also a great kind of escalation of like you know that was at least both in in this specific fight but also like long term you know is this gonna affect how much they're gonna listen to her let's see and Din saves Bo-Katan and Gideon ends up engulfed in flames which you know that's probably like you know, the armor is very, very difficult to penetrate, but you don't have to penetrate if you raise the temperature. Like, he's getting cooked in there, you know. I, like, somebody transport this, you know, the, the, send this to the Ewoks and tell them, you don't even have to cook. We, we already cooked, you know. It'll be like one of those meals where you basically just unwrap what's it called like um tinfoil you know just yeah he is there is there is nothing <laughs> yeah he's dead he's he's 100 percent dead and you know <laughs> i like the bo -Katan. you know sometimes it's just it's just the effort she puts up the the tiny little shield which is you know yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not nothing, and Grogu saves them by forming a bubble until the, the flames are, are gone, and yeah, we see that all the Mandalorians are now at the mines with the, near the, the water under Mandalore, and Ragnar is, you know, and they do it the the you know more more gentle way of just you know pouring a little bit of water onto the, the top of his head you know I, I feel like if you know if they were worried that that din might drown down there 100 like ragnar does not stand a chance so yeah and yeah you know, it's it comes up again. This this thing of you know, is Grogu a foundling or can he become an apprentice? And Din adopts him, which makes Grogu Din Grogu. So Din is actually the family name, and Jaren is his like first name. That's yeah. You know, um, do we want to make a thing out of it? I guess I'll just very very briefly make a thing out of it. So, the, there are, yeah, not, not everyone has the, the same traditions, and when Into the Spider-Verse came out, I really like Ryan George. I, I want to start by saying that I, I think he does really, really good work, and only very rarely does he say something problematic, but he talks about how, oh, you know, why does, why is Miles Morales, you know, why is his last name the, the, hold on, yes, why is, why is, his, why did he take the last name of his mother, not his father, when, like, and I'll grant, I, I actually only became aware of the following fairly recently, but this is why it's a really good idea to research these things before you just make a big deal. You know, that's apparently... Ah, let's see. Is it just a Latino thing? Or was it the specific... Ah, I, I forget, but there's a... You know, it's a it's a thing. The, you know, not, not all cultures 
use the the father's last name as the the last name of the you know the offspring once you know once once a couple is is married and have offspring uh let's see i'll i'll real quick see if it says in here so that i can have hmm uh Hmm, maybe not. Ah, uh, hold on. What if I... Why is Miles Morales... Yeah, why is Miles Morales last name Morales? Oh! Okay, that was... Is it... Um... Here we go. Yes. Using mother's last name as last name is common in Hispanic families. Let's see. Yeah. And, you know, it. I'm just saying, you know, I hate to think that some Hispanic kid might have gotten bullied because of, you know, Ryan George's pitch meeting on Into the Spider-Verse. That's all. And the, you know, I'm, I'm not saying he did it with ill intent. That's that's what I'm trying to, to get across. So I really appreciate that here we do have someone who, you know, I realize, you know, it's not the exact same thing. It's maybe apples and oranges. But we do have here a culture where they they do things slightly differently. And, like, it's not made out to be a bad thing. Because so much American media makes it out that if you're not, you know, the exact same way, you know, white, male, Protestant, Christian, conservative, you know, if, if the, the just, yeah, you know, if you're even slightly outside of the, you know, yeah, blue eyes, not red hair, and, and all these things, and it's just like, yes. It bothers me, and I really appreciate this going and, and saying, you know, and, and Star Wars has also, has always had these things where it's at least slightly different from ours without people acting like, oh, you know, what, what is this? This is horrible. Now, let's see, yeah, and, you know, the camera goes deep under the water. The mythosaur opens its eyes and it's like, just, just wake me when we get to my scene. I did kind of think that that thing would be a bigger deal this season, but I guess the vision thing was, you know, and it's like, okay, so it's still down there. There is some chance that it'll come into play either the next season or the movie that's that that they're making. So yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just commenting on it. I don't know, sometimes people think I have a problem with things that I don't really have a problem with. If it's not harmful, I don't really have a problem with it. Now, let's see. Yeah, um, the, the, uh, Din meets Carson near the bar, and, you know, Din is like, so, I have something I want to ask you, and Carson's like, shoot, you don't really want to give him ideas or excuses because he'll do that at absolutely nothing. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Din says, you know, he's for hire to Carson as the, the um, you know, independent contractor fighting the Empire. And, yeah, that does make a lot of sense as, you know, the next, like... You know, I, I feel like if at this point, if he was still like, okay, now I'm going to go out and I'm going to just be a bounty hunter. I'm going to go, you know, hunt, possibly kill someone that someone who may very well be a criminal has some kind of issue with. Like, I'll grant that sometimes he's going after people who, you know, are really awful themselves, but not not always and you know yeah he's come to realize there's definitely you know it is a bad thing for the the empire to be out there 
And I'm guessing that someone told Carson, no, Mandalorians did not, in fact, free Gideon. He had Mandalorian armor. You know, he had Beskar. And, and some of the people that he, you know, some of the Imperials that he was working with had Beskar. Yeah, that's probably a pretty safe bet that he, could, he at some point was given that information. And IG-11 is back. As the Marshal, I did see some people guessing that, I, I forget who, but someone had guessed, you know, I guess maybe Disney is not hiring Taika Waititi anymore, but yeah, you know, like he says the line, I am your new Marshal, that has to be a new line, so they're either hiring him or AR generating his voice, I don't know, but let, let's be honest, it's not really above them at this point, they're not really opposed to to replacing actors that's just anyway recast Luke is all I'm saying like give some young actor a chance to to deliver his Luke you know that's yeah but but yeah that does make a lot of sense you know at the start of the season Grief Karga was like hey Din can you be my you know, the, the marshal of, of this place, and, you know, it would feel wrong if he left Grief Karga without anything, you know, because the, they do, yeah, they've helped each other a lot, so it's, yeah, and that was the thing, you know, they were saying, with, you know, nobody has IG-11 parts, any, or IG droid parts anymore, you know, so... If you find a the the cut off head of one, which also gets kind of dark when you think about the fact that apparently some droids can feel and they just cut the head off. Like I'm I'm not averse. To, like okay, you know it's an assassin droid. If you need to kill it to save other people, do that. But cutting off the head, I I hope it was dead before then. And I hope nobody is someone gonna tell IG Eleven. By the way, I'm really glad we were able to replace your head. You're wearing the head of one of your, or part of the head of one of your brethren, by the way. But, yeah, um, really, really love this episode. Really looking forward to seeing what they're going to do next season. Am I as excited about it as season two of Andor? Not entirely, but I am still very excited. So, briefly, worst to best, all live-action Disney Plus Star Wars up to this point. The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Mandalorian Season 1, 2, and 3, and Andor Season 1. That is still my favorite. There's, I'm not sure, they're going to have to work extremely hard to top Andor Season 1. You know, that is, that, I, um, the gauntlet has been thrown. I believe they can do it with Andor Season 2, but... Consider that a challenge, but but yeah. Um, so let's. I, I guess I think the next thing that is up is a MCU show. Let's see. Secret Invasion is apparently going to premiere June twenty first, so two months from now, and the next. Star Wars live action thing. Um, hmm. August of this year. So, so yeah, that is what it looks like. And until then, I will make do with the animated shows. I did just start Rebels, which, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'll love all of it, but I really like the first, let's see, I've watched four episodes. The first four episodes I've quite liked, so, yeah. Um, yes, if you would like to watch me talk about other Star Wars, the entire playlist of all my Star Wars videos is in the description box. I've talked about all 11 movies. I have talked, I've, I've done videos on all seven seasons and a spoiler for review of the the Clone Wars. I've done a video on the Jendi Tartakovsky Clone Wars. Let's see. I get it. yeah. I've covered every every live action Disney Plus Star Wars uh, thing. 
up to and including this season and I am gradually working my way through the rest of the animated with a couple of exceptions I'm currently not planning on doing droids Ewoks and I'm not I'm probably not doing visions I th I think anime is amazing it is like just I just I don't think I'm qualified to, to talk about it you know I, I guess it's possible I will at some point watch it just to have taken in everything but I I feel like I would just be like you know it would it would be ridiculous it would be like a, a seven-year-old trying to explain like quantum mechanics or something it would just I'm, I'm, I would be completely out of my depth what I've watched of anime I've loved but I've definitely watched too little to have uh, an educated opinion on it but yeah may the force be with you